Hello, welcome to Yellow Door Urban Homestead. I am Asia and I'm an urban gardener growing on about 154 square feet of bed space in my backyard. Tonight I am out in the garden. I am going to plant out the last of my cucumbers. I did not record, but I planted out my eggplant and I planted out my sweet potato slips. So, <laughs> Uh, because I am the gardener that I am, that is not my last planting. I started some dinosaur kale, some red Russian kale, and some lettuce the other day. And I'm gonna put them in like some of the empty spots. I don't have a lot of them, but I do have a few empty spots. One thing that I, I, I never thought about talking about, when I first started gardening, I was horrible at watering. I overwatered, I underwatered. <laughs> I just was not very good at watering. If you're new to gardening, you're not sure about watering, pay attention to your soil. So there are things that say, you know, water once a week or twice a week or twice a day if it's really hot, but it really is what's going on in your area, in your soil. The thing that I do at this point is I try to water deeply. And so when you hear people say water deeply or you, that you hear someone say it needs about an inch of water a day, um, that means how much of your soil um, is gonna get get wet, essentially. What I do at this point is I know for my two larger beds that I need to do four two gallon containers and that will water my garden deeply. Um, for the smaller sections, like the one that I'm in, I know that one can water that. Um, one two gallon container can water that. If you are wondering about that, um that's a good way to kind of keep track of it so basically the way i figured that out is i watered my garden and i stuck my finger down and i wanted to see how deep down in the soil was it was it wet and i just kept adding another container so now i know the larger beds take four the smaller sections can can take one the finger test is great the other thing for watering is you can put in drip irrigation I don't have drip irrigation. It just, it, for me, seems like more work than I'm willing to do. And so I'm just not gonna do it. Also, I tried uh, soil blocks for the first time. They were not perfect, but my seeds did sprout. The other thing you could do for watering if you don't want to stand out here for an hour and a half and water your soil is to get a sprinkler. Um, and so there are plants that if you get water on their leaves, it could make them more susceptible to diseases like tomatoes, like uh, cucumbers, uh, squash. They could be subject to downy mildew, but that is a way to water. And if it's gonna get really hot in your area where the leaves will dry quickly, you can do a sprinkler. It gets really hot here. <laughs> we are normally in the summers. Most days are the are in the 90s. So I am thinking about trying that this year. We will see. I, I, I normally literally just hand water, but if it is way too hot outside, I'll grab the water hose. <laughs> so it is that time. Time to start tying up tomatoes. Uh, so I stake my tomatoes, as I have told you before. Um, and tonight I'm going to start tying them to the stakes. I'm also going to pull any suckers. Um, and so I will bring the camera a little bit closer in a few minutes as I start to work on these. Um, and so what suckers are is extra, they initially start out as leaves. They are more leaves that grow between the main stem of the plant and the side stem of, of a plant. So um, you have the main stem that all of your leaves are growing off of, and then you have just other branches that come out. In between that stem and that branch, so looks like this, another leaf will start to grow. Um, if you do not pull those, uh, they call them suckers, if you do not pull them, they will grow essentially into another plant. And if you have a lot of space or you're not too worried about airflow, that is fine. I am in a small space, and so I do worry about airflow. Um, plants that don't get enough airflow are subject to getting diseases. And so my plan is to single stem, 
which means I just want that main stem to go up this stake this year. So I brought you in pretty close to show you what a sucker is. So this is my main stem. This is a side leaf, uh, a side branch. Um, and so right here is what I mean by a sucker. And this will literally grow into a whole other plant. So I pull those. Actually, here's a really big one. I just noticed that I brought you in so close and didn't pay attention. Right here, that is a sucker. This is your main stem. This is your branch. And that is your sucker. So I'm gonna pull that sucker <laughs> out. Now you see my main stem. This is my main stem going straight up. These are branches coming out of the stem. And what I'm gonna do is just start about here and I'm gonna tie the yarn loosely around the tomato. Don't tie it too tight because your tomato is gonna get larger as the year goes on. Um, and so I learned this the hard way and had to like retie all of my tomatoes um, my second year gardening. Um, and once it starts to grow, the string it will start to kind of cut the tomato because the tomato is trying to grow and the string doesn't expand and i'm going to loosely tie it around the tomato and try to tie it above a branch so that it doesn't slide down the stake in the tomato and just like that i have staked my tomato like i said it's loose but as the season goes on, the main stem of this tomato is going to enlarge. So right there is the extra space that I have for it to continue to grow. Now is a good time to also check your lower leaves. I pulled off my lower leaves when I planted out my tomatoes, but um, if you didn't, or if you're noticing that your lower leaves have some type of blight or Maybe if they are starting to look a little suspect, this is a good time to go ahead and pull your lower leaves as well. Um, in most cases for me, the bottom of these plants are gonna end up being bare by the end of the season um, because I do prune quite heavily. And if I notice anything that looks like blight, <laughs> I go ahead and pull it. My first year of gardening, um, my tomato plants got blight so terrible. I didn't know what it was and I just was pulling and pulling and pulling. I had a horrible tomato harvest that year, but I learned a valuable lesson <laughs> um, by having that happen to me. This is a good time to go ahead and do that to save your tomatoes from some ridiculous disease that would stop you from getting those delicious tomatoes uh, throughout the growing season. If you stake your tomatoes, in the comments, tell us how you stake your tomatoes. What do you use um, to stake your tomatoes? I'm trellising some of mine. It's only a few and it's mostly cherry tomatoes. So here's a better example of the two liter thing I was telling you about, uh, that sucker. So this is the main stem here. This is the branch coming out, and that is actually a sucker. So I could leave that and let it grow, and I would end up with two liters. I'm not gonna leave it, um, because I don't want to. <laughs> okay, so I should point out that you do not pull suckers on a determinate tomatoes. The tomatoes that I have in this bed are determinate, meaning they are gonna grow to a certain size, they're gonna produce all of their fruit, and they are gonna be done. Um, so on determinate tomatoes, you do not pull suckers because that's where, you know, that's gonna be a portion of where you get some of your fruit from. So indeterminate tomatoes is when you would wanna pull suckers. Um, some people say you shouldn't do it on your cherry tomatoes, but I do. So it's totally a choice that you can make. I harvested a few things and picked our eggs. We got three tonight. Um, but thanks for watching. Um, don't forget to like, subscribe, share if you feel it. Don't forget to visit me over on IG, Instagram, um, at Miss MS Asia Spratly. I post over there about everything going on in the garden at least one time a day. I will see you on Saturday. I'm ask to see the lights at night. It is not all the way nighttime, but those are the lights.
when you walk in, that's what you are greeted with inside the garden. And then if you walk over, there's more lights over here. There's some on this trellis as well. And that is the garden lights. My daughter turned them on to movement and I don't know how to get them off. <laughs> so that's our little stamp on the garden, the, the movement of the lights. <laughs>